So today's video is all about organizing your kitchen in a super practical way on a budget. What we are not gonna talk about is how to get a million glass jars to pour your different ingredients in, how to make beautiful labels or anything like that. This is just about where to put things in a practical way so that your kitchen is really easy to work in. And the reason this is so important is because human nature is what it is. And if something is hard and just feels like a chore, you don't wanna do it. So cooking already every day feels like a chore. And if you set up your kitchen in such a way so that it looks beautiful for one day and you take pictures of it and you're really proud of it, but then the rest of your everyday life, it just feels like an absolute pain to be in, you're gonna cook less and less. Um, it's hard on your budget, it's hard on your health. And really the best way to save money has always been cooking at home. That's still true to this day. And we really need to set up our kitchen in a way that helps us do that. So first I'm gonna go over some general principles that apply to anyone, no matter what size kitchen you have, how you cook, whatever. And then in the next portion, I'm gonna take you through my kitchen, zone by zone, show you how I've organized it. I have to warn you, it is not like a beautiful Pinterest kitchen. I'm kind of sharing it this way on purpose because I don't want you to just be discouraged by all those beautiful kitchens you see on YouTube. I want you to see that this is just about being practical, being organized, and that absolutely anybody can do it. The very first rule of organizing your kitchen, really organizing anything, especially your kitchen, is you have to store things where you use them. And this seems really obvious, right? But a lot of times we don't organize things in this way. So everybody keeps their dish soap next to the sink, right? It would be completely ridiculous not to, and that makes sense to us. But then we do really dumb things, like have a walk-in pantry where we have all of our ingredients for baking when all of our baking takes place in one specific spot on our counter. So what you need to do is not think about where things are going to look good or where it kind of makes sense to you. The only rule about where you put things is where you use them. Like for example, in my kitchen, in almost everybody's kitchen, the most frequently used spot is in between the sink and the stove. That is where all the action happens. And anything that you can put into that zone in between the sink and the stove is very important. So that's like your most valuable real estate. You have to put the things that you're using all the time in that spot. If you cook a lot with flour, spices, baking soda, you're baking, all that type of thing, those things should be in this area. So I will just, I'll show you closer up real quick, but I have in here um, all of my spices in this cabinet, and then I have a Lazy Susan where I have all my flour and sugar. So that is super helpful. Um, I also have measuring spoons and cups in a drawer here. But don't do things like put really frequently used things in a pantry. Pantries are great, they are super practical. We'll cover really the best way to use them later. But if it's an everyday item, keep it where you stand every day. Everybody has things that they do not use all the time. Things like um, your ice cream maker. I mean, I use mine all the time, a lot of people don't. Um, any holiday baking pans or tins, sprinkles, those are the things that should go in those really hard to reach cabinets, like up above your fridge, above your stove. If you have tall cabinets like this, if you have those top two shelves that you can only reach with a step stool, use those to put the most infrequently used things. Think of your kitchen almost as like a series of concentric circles where you have the really most frequently used stuff in the center, and then as the circles go out, fewer and fewer things. Now, most videos about organizing your kitchen are focused on buying things like little shelves, little dividers, labels. I already said I'm not really talking about this, but they do have a time and a place. Um, so if you really have your heart set on getting a few things like this, a few super simple drawer dividers can be really useful. Fridge organizers can be nice. Um, and I'll show you later on in this video how I use those exactly. And the last thing is just to make sure that what, when you're organizing something and giving it a new home, you have to think to yourself, how easy is this to use? It's not just you using the kitchen, it's the rest of your family. So if you have people who will walk by a hook just to throw their coat on a countertop, you have to be realistic about the idea of like putting your measuring cups on a small hook inside your cabinet door to free up door space. Is that really realistic? Not just for you, but for everybody else. So be super honest about making things very simple to put away, 
very simple to use, very simple to clean. That tends to be the only way that they'll actually happen. So I'm gonna show you um, some areas in my kitchen that sort of live by these principles, particularly the one about storing things where they use them. Again, I have to warn you, this is not beautiful. People asked me for this video. I was I'm a little nervous about doing it because my kitchen isn't perfect, but I do think it will in a way be helpful. So I've talked a lot about the sink and the stove and how these things, woo, need to be packed with the stuff that you use every day. Um, now in between my sink and stove, I basically just have a really small amount of cabinets. I don't have a lot of cabinets in general in my kitchen because I have so many windows, which does limit my space, but I work around it. So anyway, um, in this cabinet here, I have a Lazy Susan. And what I put in here is any type of cooking oil, flour, sugar, I bake a ton. Um, so I want all that stuff right here. So if you have drawers or cabinets, I think what you, like if you have just plain cabinets, what I would do is get pullouts. Um, but this cabinet is super valuable real estate. Lazy Susans in general can be a little bit of a pain. Um, but you really have to be, with your ingredients, when you have a long list of ingredients, you don't want your heart to sink when you see that list. You wanna just be able to zoom, 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 get what you need um, and make it really easy to cook from your pantry. So what I do is I put um, oil, vinegar, Crisco, flour, everything up here. And then the lower shelf, I try to keep for like really um, more unusual stuff, like candy melts, wheat gluten, for nutters um, and then I also have refill containers so that when I run out of something I can refill my packages easily um, rather than wondering if I have it somewhere else I always just keep unopened ones down there in this cabinet here this is another super important one I have all of my measuring spoons now I talked about a little bit about dividers um, and this is a really handy thing to have just for measuring spoons. That's one of the only like actual organizing items I have. And then in here, I just have my measuring cups. This is a tiny drawer. It's only about, it doesn't even look like it's 12 inches, but it fits all that stuff. Then in here are all of my small appliances, hand mixer, food processor. If I had pullouts or if I had drawers, that would be even better. I don't, I just make the best of it, shove them in there and pull out what I need. And the next one is a little bit weird. And when you start organizing things and storing them where you use them, things do get a little bit weird. So you just have to kind of be prepared for that. Um, this drawer right here is knives. So if you're, you know, think if you're chopping, um, preparing dinner, you're always gonna be using knives, cutting shears, that type of thing. And then the other thing I have in it is my wax melts because my little wax melt scenty thing is right above it. So a lot of people would say, oh, put these somewhere like a linen closet with your candles and everything's together. But that doesn't make sense to me when I run out or when I wanna switch scents. I just want it to be right there, right where I use it, easy to use. Okay, so another thing that people use all the time that I'm sure you use all the time in your kitchen is mixing bowls and cutting boards. If you're trying to save space, um, what I like to do is to just put really lightweight, I have pretty mixing bowls that I use for stirring and things like that. But every day I actually really prefer these like lightweight plastic ones just cause I can super simply grab them out, stack them without like having to retake everything out, nest them all carefully, have them clanking everywhere. I really like these plastic ones. And then cutting boards just go on their sides, which is a super great way to save space. And then I have my air fryer, my microwave, which is super cheap, and then my favorite cookbooks, which is really just three cookbooks and then my recipe binder. I think cookbooks in your kitchen look really cute and really pretty, but chances are you're only using a few of them. Um, so I do have a video on making a recipe binder and that comes with a free printable um, where you can make your own like this. This is a great thing to have, saves a ton of room in your kitchen, um, but you want this handy, right? When it comes time to make dinner, you've got all this stuff at your fingertips and you want your recipes to be at your fingertips too, but don't waste space by just shoving a whole shelf full of random cookbooks that you use once a year at Christmas time. Okay, so now over in the stove area, um, you definitely, everyone has um, spatulas, flippers, tongs, these type of things, and you want them close to your stove, but they don't need to be in your prep area that's in between your sink and your stove. They can be on sort of that outside edge of your stove. I like to have a few pot holders in here for pick, picking up like a hot lid or a hot handle 
but you also need pot holders over by your oven. So this is another thing to keep in mind when you're storing things that are used in multiple places. If you can have two locations for them that are super close to where you use them, that's great. If not, not a huge deal, but if you can, it's really helpful. Um, this is my conditioning oil for my cast iron right in this drawer where I would use it. Um, then my cast iron pots and pans I keep on the stove. I have other pots and pans that I don't use as frequently and those just go in this drawer here. And then down here, I have um, casserole dishes. These aren't, you know, if I could put these somewhere else, I probably would, but sometimes it just doesn't work out perfectly. This is okay. A lot of times casseroles go from stove to oven. So, you know, you put it here, load it up, move it to the oven, whatever. It's not always going to be perfect. Also over here, I have my toaster. And so because my toaster is here, I put my bread here in this basket. This is like a fruit basket. Obviously there's not fruit in it right now, just bread. And then I have this little tiny plate that has salt, pepper, and butter so that when I'm cooking and I need just a little bit of that, it's close at hand. So this is another one of those things that people really think is weird at first, but it just makes perfect sense. So now I'm over here and the other side of the sink. So it's no longer that like super used zone of in between sink and stove. This is still stuff we use every day, but it's not like the absolute most important thing, like measuring spoons and flour. Um, a lot of this stuff is for serving and for drinks. So think of these almost just like little stations where if somebody wants to come get a drink or grab a plate, they're not in your way. Excuse me, I need a plate while you're trying to like cook chicken. So. Um, here's my coffee pot, and since my coffee pot is here, the mugs are here too, so our coffee syrups. Um, we don't put milk in our coffee. If you did, some people will go so far as to say you should have a small fridge. I would never do that. You take the few steps, you grab the milk, but just think in stations. Everything you need for that one activity, um, try to put it in one spot. So then I have my countertop ice maker here, um, and then we have our water bottles down below here, and then in this drawer, a silverware organizer and then all of our like reusable cup or bottle lids so that if somebody wants water, they're just grabbing the bottle, getting ice, getting water from the sink, putting the lid on and they're done all in this one spot. This is plates. Um, I would like to have these a little closer. If I had a set of two cabinets over here and I could fit my spices and my plates together, I probably would. But in a sense, it's also nice that this is out of the way of somebody cooking so that if somebody just wants a snack, they can grab that plate and stay away. So this cabinet here is where I store, um, I have a couple like unopened things here, canned food and just like random unopened sauces. So it's nothing that I would, again, need. Like if I'm making a dinner that involves these, I come to this almost like it's a grocery store and just grab what I need. Um, but it's, you know, a lot of just kind of basic staples like this. And this is, so this plus the Lazy Susan and Spice cabinet is the only food storage in my house, except for bulk food storage, which I'm gonna talk about in a sec. So if you have one of those big giant pantries that are like a separate room in your house, you're probably thinking, so what is the point of that at this point? If you have all of your things tucked in, you know, random nooks and crannies, what's the point of having a pantry? And there's still a great point of having a pantry. And that is that all of those things that don't really need to go in your kitchen at all can now go in your pantry. And that becomes like your mini grocery store. So if you have canisters of flour over here where they're convenient and then you buy a 20 pound bag of flour. The 20 pound bag goes in the pantry and you're just refilling from there. If you have drinks in your fridge where it's convenient because that's where people want to grab them, you stock your fridge and then those big cases of drinks go in there. So it just becomes like a mini store that's replenishing all of the supplies that you're using. Just don't make the mistake of thinking all my food should go in here and now every time you want to make chocolate chip cookies, it's this huge ordeal trekking ingredient by ingredient to grab it and then even worse having to go back and put it away. Um, so I know this wasn't groundbreaking and definitely wasn't beautiful, but I hope that it helped you understand that your kitchen organization shouldn't be driven by beauty, it should be driven just by common sense. 
make your life as easy as possible by setting up your kitchen practically. And I think you'll find that over time, it makes things easy, it saves you money, and it's just a great decision overall. Um, so I'm going to leave in the description box a link to a way where you can access my printable library for my email subscribers, where I have lots and lots of checklists, printable labels. If you like that type of pretty thing, I do have it for free um, to download and print. So thank you for watching. That is it. And I hope you have a great day. Bye.